Hi, and welcome to the start of chapter nine. So today we're gonna to learn about lesson 9.1, which is sequences in series. And you may have done some of these before. We're gonna start out with some very basic math dealing with sequences in series. And then as we move on in the chapter, it will get more complicated. Okay, so what is a sequence? Our sequences are just ordered lists. They are lists that have specific entries or terms in specific places, depending on what place you are in the sequence. So they can have either a finite or a set amount of entries. For example, they could have 10 entries or 15 entries or 100 entries. All of those would be considered to be finite. Or they can have an infinite amount of entries where we don't know, it never ends. So sequences can be both finite or infinite. One of the very most famous sequences is the Fibonacci sequence, which you may or may not be familiar with. It's also called the golden ratio, or it deals with the golden ratio. And the way that you find the Fibonacci sequence is you take the terms in the sequence and you add the previous two terms together. So the first 10 terms of the Fibonacci sequence are below. So you would start with zero. Your next one would be one. So one plus zero is one. So that's how we get this term. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus five is 13. So on and so forth. And this sequence goes on forever. It is an infinite sequence. But that's how you actually determine the terms of the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so that's just an example for you for background, and like I said, it's the golden ratio, which is found everywhere in nature, in architecture, things like that. But it's just kind of some background information of a very famous sequence for you. Okay, so factorials. You may be familiar with factorials. They are used a lot in sequences, and what it is, is first of all, it's represented by this exclamation point. When you see the explanation point right there, that means that you have a factorial. And a factorial is just the consecutive integers leading up to whatever term, this is your term right here, multiplied together. So you'd have one times two times three times four, all the way up to times n if you have n factorial. So some of the basic ones, and this one's a little bit tricky, zero factorial actually equals one. So it's just something to commit to memory. One factorial is one, because that just means one. Two factorial means that you're going to multiply all the numbers leading up to two, so one times two, which is two. Three factorial, you're gonna multiply all of the integers leading up to three, so one times two times three, so this becomes six. Four factorial, we have one times two times three times four. So this was six, all we added on was a four. Six times four is 24, right? Because these are the same numbers right here. So we can see that this would be four times three factorial as well. So that's how you calculate factorials. Now we're gonna actually put that into a sequence. So we have a sequence below. We need to find the first three terms. So that means we need to find a sub one, a sub two, and a sub three. So a sub one, we want n factorial over n. This is our n right here. So this means that we have one factorial divided by one. Well, we know that one factorial from the previous slide is just one, so one divided by one equals one. That's our first term. Okay, a sub two. That means we have two factorial, and we're gonna divide that by two. Okay, so we're gonna rewrite two factorial out. So that means we have one times two, or two times one. Sorry, I kinda did that one backwards. Divided by two. Well, those will cancel, and we're just left with one. Okay, three factorial divided by three. So this means that we have one times two times three divided by three. So those terms will cancel out and your answer is just two times one, which is two. 
So those are your first three terms of the following sequence. Now, one thing that you can notice here is because our formula, remember n factorial will be like one times two times three dot 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 times n minus one times n, and we'd have that all over n. So these will always cancel, these last terms will cancel with your denominator. So you could rewrite this sequence as n minus one factorial. That's another way to write n factorial over n. So when you're dealing with these in your homework problems, you're gonna be asked to simplify and this sequence particularly can be rewritten like this. Because when we write this out, our n nth term of the factorial will always cancel with its denominator. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Summation. So summation can sometimes be a scary word, but it really isn't. All it means is that you are adding all of the terms of a sequence together. And when you add all the terms of a sequence together, this summation is called a series. So summation is represented by the Greek letter sigma. It kind of looks like a very fancy pointed E, capital E. And like I said, all you're doing is adding the terms together according to what the summation sign says. So let's go on to an example and see what I mean by this. Okay, so we have, and excuse the boxes here, I couldn't get rid of those for some reason, but we have a summation or we have a series and we wanna find the sum of the given series. So what we see here is this gives us the one over k squared plus one, so this information right here, that gives us the terms of our sequence. And what these numbers and letters here mean is this is what I want it from. So I want from k equals one to three. So I want the first three terms of this series and I'm gonna add them together. So that's what all of that means. I'm gonna clear that off there. So we're gonna start with k equals one. All right, so we plug in one for k. So that means we have one over one squared plus one, which equals one over one squared is just one, so one half. When we plug in two for k, we get one over two squared plus one, which is one over four plus one, which equals one fifth. And when k equals three, we have one over three squared plus one, which equals one over nine plus one, which is one tenth. Okay, so the summation is just gonna be these three terms added together. So our summation of one over k squared plus one from k equals one to three equals one half plus one fifth plus one tenth. When you add up all of those fractions, you end up getting four fifths. And that would be your answer for this particular problem. We found the sum of the series of the given sequence, one over k squared plus one from k equals one to three. We found exactly what they were looking for. We found each term and we added those three terms together and you get four fifths. Okay, so that is it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this and have a good one. Take care, bye-bye.